on my my hair's almost longer than my wife's now. <laughs> yes, yes, this is funny, isn't it? Yeah. Hi everyone, welcome to today's press conference. We will start with Councillor Ainsley. Please go ahead, Councillor. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Paul Ainsley, City of Toronto's Councillor for Scarborough Guildwood Ward 24, and Tam Heather Curling Club is uh, part of my community in Scarborough Guildwood. Today's announcement is uh, very exciting for the local community. I'm uh, joined this morning by Mayor John Tory, John McKay, member of Scarborough Guildwood, I'm sorry, member of Parliament for Scarborough Guildwood on behalf of the Honourable Catherine McKenna, Federal Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, Vijay Thangalasam, Ontario's Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Transportation and Member of Provincial Parliament for Scarborough Rouge Park, who is going to provide remarks on behalf of the Honourable Laurie Scott. Ontario's Minister of Infrastructure. I'd first like to invite John McKay on behalf of the Honourable Catherine McKenna, Federal Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, to provide remarks on behalf of the federal government. John. Sorry, John, you're on mute. Is that better? That's much better. Okay. There's a lot of people who think that it's a good idea that I uh, be on mute uh, permanently. So, so having unmuted myself, we'll get this started again. Uh, my name is John McKay. I'm the member of Parliament for Scarborough Guildwood, and I'm here on behalf of the Honourable Catherine McKenna to uh, make an announcement with respect to the uh, Tam Heather Curling Club. Um, and if uh, and and I. But first of all, I want to uh, acknowledge that uh, we are on the uh, lands of the Wenda, the Anishinaabe, the Métis, and the Mississaugas of the credit. Um, since last March, uh, Canadians have been impacted by the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic from coast to coast to coast. And we've been learning to cope with new realities in the new world in which we find ourselves. It's not been an easy time for many, but even as the situation continues to evolve um, in all orders of government, and I would take note that we are, as a nation, making significant progress. Um, we are leading the G7 and the G20 in terms of vaccinations uh, to first first time vaccinations to um, our citizens. So I think it is. Uh, I don't know whether it's quite it light at the end of the tunnel, but at least we can see where the light might be at the end of the tunnel. And I, I think it appropriate that at this time we also acknowledge that all orders of government have uh, worked tirelessly to uh, bring this about. But we, uh, we hopefully are going to be uh, at the end of uh, this uh, pandemic and possibly this time next year. Um, we won't be talking about the pandemic, but we'll be talking about other people at Tam Heather are enjoying the uh, upgrades in their uh, curling club. Um, so I'm pleased to uh, join uh, colleagues um, for this announcement. The federal government has put up about uh, just a little over a million dollars, a million and ninety-six thousand dollars for this particular two point seven million dollar project, and other levels of government have joined in with uh, their respective shares. Um, and if ever uh, we have appreciate the need for uh, cultural amenities, it's surely to goodness in the last 14 or 16 months. These are opportunities for all of our citizens to get out um, and to uh, inter uh, interact with others and to enjoy a recreation and do normal things. And Lord knows we all need to get back to normal. So um, this project will uh, facilitate that. It's an uh, upgrade on the um, uh, on the uh, air conditioning uh, system. It's an upgrade for uh, the connections to the tennis bubble and a variety of other things which other colleagues will uh, describe. Um, people, um, perhaps partnerships are key to supporting uh, communities across the country. And uh, we have over the past uh, number of months in, uh, worked with uh, all levels of, um, of government. I particularly want to acknowledge uh, the working relationship with Mayor Tory. Uh, Mayor Tory is a frequent visitor to our 416 caucus, and uh, we have uh, over the last few months, indeed years, uh, developed a, 
a close working relationship with him, which I think is to the benefit of all of our citizens, our citizens. So today's uh, announcement is a good investment for today. It's a good investment for tomorrow. Uh, great nations build great things, and we are a nation building uh, enterprise for the 21st century. And um, and by investing in community and the cultural infrastructure of today, we're putting down pay putting down a down payment uh, on a more connected and resilient uh, communities where Canadians can live and grow and raise their families for generations to come. So again, thank you, colleagues. Uh, thank you uh, to the uh, citizens of Scarborough Guildwood. Uh, this is a significant upgrade to um, a important cultural institution in our community. And I'll turn it back to you, Paul. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate your remarks and, and being here this morning. Uh, it's my pleasure now to invite uh, BJ Thangalassam to provide remarks on behalf of the Honourable Laurie Scott, Ontario's Minister of Infrastructure. Sure, Vijay, you're, mute, you're muted too. Thank you, Councillor Ainsley, uh, for the introduction. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm uh, Vijay Thanigaslam, MPP for the riding of Scarborough Bridge Park. Uh, it is a time when our province has experienced the worst of the pandemic, I'm here today on behalf of the Honorable Laurie Scott, Ontario's Minister of Infrastructure and the Ontario government to deliver some good news. Our government is committed to supporting infrastructure projects in Scarborough to better serve our growing community. As the COVID-19 pandemic has clearly highlighted, investments in health and wellness of Ontarians is more critical than ever, especially in Scarborough, which has been hard hit by the pandemic. And this is why investing in infrastructure, uh, like the project that we are announcing today, is important to keep residents in Scarborough active. Today, I'm pleased to announce more than 900,000 in provincial funding to help upgrade and repair Tam Heather Curling Club in Toronto. Our investments will be used to upgrade, repair the interior and exterior of the, of the building, as well as make the building uh, fully accessible. Once completed, the Tam Heather Curling Club will be safer and more enjoyable for the Curling Club's member, members and visitors to use. Today's announcement is an addition to Ontario's recent infrastructure investments uh, right here in Scarborough. Ontario is funding uh, renovations and upgrades to the Chinese Culture Centre of Greater Toronto. We are also building Bridal Town Neighbourhood Centre of Community which will support healthcare services and youth programs here in Scarborough. Ontario's 2021 budget, released on March 24th, uh, builds on our government's record investment made in response to global, the global pandemic to protect the health and to protect our economy. Ontario's COVID-19 action plan now totals 51 billion, supporting cultural and recreational infrastructure projects like the one we're announcing today for the Tam Heather Curling Club, help to protect our communities and make them more stronger, healthier, and safer. The Investing in Canada infrastructure program is providing up to 30 billion in total project funding for communities across Ontario for 10 years. This includes over 10.2 billion from the provincial government. Together, we are rebuilding the economy, creating healthy, and safe communities across Ontario through our federal provincial partnership. I would like to thank Mayor John Tory of Toronto and our federal partners for your contributions towards this meaningful project. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay. I really appreciate you being here this morning and your comments and your government's support for the Tam Heather Curling and Tennis Club. It's now my pleasure to introduce Mayor John Tory. Uh, to bring his remarks on behalf of the City of Toronto. Mayor Tory. Well, Paul, thank you and good morning, everybody. And uh, I'm pleased to be here with John McKay, the uh, MP uh, for this area. And uh, he's representing, of course, Infrastructure Minister Catherine McKenna, with whom I've had the pleasure of making a number of announcements. And, you know, when we talk even just about Scarborough in the last little while, we've put money, uh, all of us collectively, into the uh, Bridal Town Hub, which is going to be a very unique way of serving uh, people in a number of different respects, uh, to the Chinese-Canadian Cultural Centre, which is an iconic 
uh, building in Scarborough that uh, really serves the entire uh, community. And I think that's the, uh, the wonderful thing about the infrastructure funding is that it uh, uh, covers a wide variety of things from sporting and recreational type activities to cultural centers to uh, things like the Brattletown uh, Hub. And uh, of course, it has been a partnership. Uh, the federal government have been good partners on these things, but uh, and 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 so too on many of these things has the provincial government been a good partner. And uh, BJ Sanag uh is is a person who has uh, again, like Councillor Ainsley, spoken up uh, for Scarborough and Mr. McKay. Uh, they all do the same. I hear from them all very regularly about the interests of Scarborough projects in Scarborough. And they fight for a community of some 700,000 people uh, within the city of Toronto that uh, has been in many respects underinvested uh, over the years. And uh, I think all of us are working together. And uh, in, in this case, uh, the one I hear most frequently from is Paul Ainsley, who is someone that uh, is steeped in uh, Scarborough and all that goes on in Scarborough and, and fights for his community every day at City Hall. So it is a pleasure to announce the joint funding for a building that is owned by the city of Toronto. It's a building that's historically been owned by the city of Toronto uh, and where um, a lot of these uh, sporting activities uh, take place. Uh, curling has a long history in Canada. It was brought uh, from Scotland to Canada. Uh, it's been played since the 1800s here and it's very much become part of the fabric of the city. And it's interesting because we've done some research on trying to develop a strategy since we have some of these uh, ownerships in buildings and so on uh, that uh, we uh, uh, are, are trying to keep a legacy alive. And it's very interesting to see that when you take the core legacy of curling, uh, with, which has been around for a long time, the first curling club having been established in Toronto in 1836, uh, you build on that. Uh, the fact that uh, when you do the research, you find that there is a huge interest in curling among the uh, diverse population that is Toronto in uh, the 21st century. Um, it, it's uh, it's a good thing. It's an active uh, act, it's an active sport to take part in during the winter months. Uh, it's very social activity, so it brings people together. And in that sense, what you want to do is uh, kind kind of promote these places and activities that bring people together in a big city uh, on an increasing basis. And the research has shown that many members of uh, different equity uh, deserving groups, perhaps uh, helped by the fact that curling has become a popular television sport. And so I think a lot of people see it on television, which they might not have in prior uh, times. Um, but a lot of people see it on television and there's keen interest, according to the studies that the city's done in looking at a curling strategy in um, among people who are children. Uh, uh, and youth, members of the 2S LGBTQ communities, and those with physical and intellectual and developmental challenges. They're, they're all groups of people who have a keen interest in uh, curling. And so I think there's every hope that uh, by making sure we have proper facilities, well-maintained facilities, up-to-date facilities, uh, we can foster that kind of togetherness that uh, can exist on a cold winter day uh, or otherwise uh, and get people together uh, to curl. Uh, increasing access to ice uh, that is and wheelchair accessible is also an important part of this if you're trying to attract uh, diverse populations to come and to take part in curling and part of the renovation funding is going to go to uh, making these kinds of changes uh, so as to allow for the broadening of interest and participation in the sport of curling so i'm once again very thankful i'm always happy without exception when all three governments work together to get something done and this infrastructure program generally, and this grant in particular, is, an, is, is an, a good example of something that is local. It's very local. Uh, it is uh, principally addressed to one uh, sport that is followed by many. It is a sport that has the potential to grow among different populations uh, that live in the city of Toronto. And it is a public asset. And the worst thing we could do is to let these public assets run down and be in a state where they're uh, no longer of value uh, to us in the context of uh, being, you know, sometimes uh, even unusable. And it'll this this investment will and uh, the things that are being done that have been mentioned, the air conditioning, other things will uh, will increase and 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 lengthen uh, the lifespan of this building. The city of Toronto is contributing more than seven hundred thousand dollars to the project. It's previously been mentioned that the government of Canada is investing around a million dollars. Uh, through the uh, infrastructure stream of the Invest in Canada plan, and the government of Ontario has provided nine hundred thousand uh, dollars coming from the same program. So it is another concrete example of what can be done when the governments work together. Uh, the improvements include the HVAC that's been discussed, life safety systems, and uh, various interior finishes uh, to the building, including uh, aspects of accessibility uh, that uh, will be uh, upgraded, a refurbished accessible change room in the basement level, and an accessible access route from the tennis bubble 
uh, to the curling facility. So it'll make the building more energy efficient, which helps with our climate change uh, initiatives, all of the governments, and uh, makes it more accessible and provides it uh, provides it with funding needed to make it a more um, expanded uh, community recreational facility in, in general terms. And this will make a real difference to expand uh, the audience that can take advantage of this program. So I am very pleased uh, to say thank you uh, for the investment from the Government of Canada and from the Government of Ontario and to say that uh, this is something that I think is going to help us to build a stronger, a more inclusive city and also to help us to keep our recreational facilities uh, in the kind of shape that they need to be in so that people in this generation and generations to come have access to it, not just during a time of pandemic when these kinds of things became more important, but all times when um, having access to proper recreation uh, of all different kinds is uh, very important to people. So thank you to the other governments and uh, thank you to the people who paid for all of this. Um, I think this is going to be a great thing for this community and for all of Toronto. Thank you, uh, Councillor Ainsley. Thank you, Mayor Tori. I really appreciate your uh, your comments and your support, ongoing support for my uh, community here in Scarborough Guildwood. And uh, thank you to VJ and John for both of your respective governments. Uh, as a city councillor here in Scarborough Guildwood, I always joke that I'm never shy about getting financial resources into my community uh, where they're needed. And Tim Heather and Tim Heather Curling and Tennis Club uh, about 15 years ago. We worked with the Scarborough Tennis Association and, and city staff uh, to put a bubble on the uh, new bubble on the on the, the tennis courts. Uh, the main building, as has been mentioned a few times, has some accessibility issues around uh, the, the change rooms and the banquet room, uh, meeting rooms are in the basement. They're only, only accessible by stairwell. Uh, the, the curling pad, uh, similar situations only accessible by stairs. And it's, as the mayor just mentioned, curling's becoming uh, much more possible. Uh, sorry, popular. Um, the club has reached out to the to the St. John Paul II Catholic High School across the street, Military Trail Public School, to get the students involved in both curling and tennis, which I deeply appreciate. And uh, just behind those two clubs is the Mornell Court community which is part of the west hill neighborhood improvement uh, area so somewhere where the clubs have also been reaching out to, to students to get them involved uh, the improvements to the hvac system another great example of all levels of government coming together for the residents of scarborough guildwood uh, i never get excited uh, as we have a lack of community space in scarborough and there's always a need for more uh, to have a building such as this empty in the summer because there is no HVAC or air conditioning, which doesn't uh, really make it usable for my residents in the summer months. So I really want to thank all of you for, for being here this morning for your respective government's support for the residents here in Scarborough Guildwood. And at this time, I would like to invite members of the media to participate in a question and answer session which is going to be moderated by Lawin Hadisi. And at this term, I'm going to turn it over to, oh, sorry. And I'd also, at this time, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank all the respective members of our uh, city's park and recreation department for all the hard work that they do, not only at Tam Heather, but in the surrounding community, uh, keeping our, our facilities um, impeccable. And I always like to brag about our park and ravine systems, uh, how well they're used and how beautiful they are here in uh, Scarborough. And saying that, I want to thank you. And uh, Lavin, I am going to turn it over to you. Thank you. We will now open the floor to questions. As a reminder, it's one question, one follow up. Please unmute yourself before asking your question. First up, we have David Ryder from the Toronto Star. Please go ahead. Hi, everybody. Um, I just want to broaden it out and ask, given the concerns with COVID-19 and now a lot of talk about HVAC and air circulation and ventilation, is there been any talk about what the City of Toronto could potentially face in terms of trying to uh, redo not just systems at this one facility, but at, at all the different facilities across the city and what that could potentially entail? I will uh, answer that question 
we're presently engaged in a very far reaching uh, examination of all of the aspects of kind of post pandemic life and dealing with some of the very immediate concerns uh, that uh, have to do with, uh, say, even the, the kind of rapid testing program that we announced yesterday in conjunction with the Board of Trade uh, through to uh, considerations for the transit system uh, and other things like that, uh, but also we're taking a look at some of the, 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 the longer range uh, uh, necessities that may exist for us or, or, or mandates that we may need to have to uh, to, to rethink uh, or, or to uh, renew or otherwise uh, modify uh, things like HVAC systems. So uh, it's part of a very broad examination of sort of the aftermath, as it were, of the pandemic to make sure that both in terms of keeping people healthy generally, uh, but also in, in light of the possibility of some other uh, pandemic of this kind happening in the future. What lessons did we learn uh, from this one in terms of the necessary HVAC you have to have and the degree to which that plays a part in these kinds of uh, airborne uh, viruses? So uh, the answer to your question is yes, we're not down to the granular level yet of looking at a sort of a building by building uh, assessment, but we're looking at the general issue of HVAC and the role that it plays and what steps might have to be taken to do, for example, a building by building audit and see uh, what uh, comes out of that. Thank you. And my follow up, I think, will also be for Mayor Tory. It'll be on the vaccine issue. And that's that the uh, the province of Ontario has opened up more spots and made more eligibility for hotspot uh, public health units, including Toronto. But as far as we could tell yesterday, not actually increased any supply above the normal per capita allotment. Um, the, the health minister suggested something about like wanting health units to empty their freezers, which seemed to puzzle Toronto officials yesterday because they said we don't have a stockpile. When we find out how much we're going to get on a Friday, we open up the appointments for the following week. Mayor Tory, have you had any indication that we are actually going to get more supply? Because it seems like we saw all, all sorts of people getting frustrated trying to book yesterday and, and I, it sounds like that's a supply problem. From the beginning, uh, we have not opened up an appointment for which we did not have a vaccine. But conversely, it's also true to say that we have not uh, had uh, vaccines sitting in freezers. Uh, we obviously get uh, deliveries mainly on Mondays, and they obviously are for the week to follow. Uh, and the number of appointments we've set up uh, are based entirely on the amount of vaccine that we were slated to receive and do receive on, on Mondays or any other day of the week at this moment in time. Uh, we have not received, other than some very modest indications of, uh, of additional supply, the kind of supply that make a material difference in uh, the in, in meeting the demand that we have out there, as evidenced by all the appointments that people booked and tried to book uh, yesterday. Um, I have, uh, as you know, I think probably without exception, when the province has changed eligibility criteria, accompanied that with a, you know, a, a, a very um, rational uh, request for additional supply, both in the context of uh, meeting the increased demand that those changes in eligibility create, and also from the standpoint of vaccine equity, uh, the efforts that we want to make, that we are making, and we want to continue to make as a city uh, to make sure that we have um, you know, uh, an, an additional quantity of vaccine to address the fact that there are some people in the city that are more at risk uh, than others, and we should address that as a means of, of, of curtailing the virus. So I would say, looking at it from today, uh, first, uh, every dose of vac a vaccine that we have continues to be a, to, to be allocated to an appointment at an, either a city run clinic or uh, at a, a elsewhere uh, operated by our health partners in the city. There is no uh, there is no extra quantity of vaccine anywhere that is not accounted for and that is not going to be used for appointments that are presently uh, booked. Uh, secondly, that we uh, do continue to reiterate a request for more vaccine, both so that we can uh, meet the demand that is out there that is based on the eligibility rules set by the province. And uh, because we have a, a, any other vaccine that we can by way of extra is, is can be allocated to our uh, continuing extraordinary efforts in the uh, communities that are most in need of, um, of uh, extra uh, support to bring down barriers uh, to uh, vaccination and I commend uh, the fact that uh, these eligibility criteria have been opened up commend the province for that because I think it was uh, right uh, to meet that desire on the part of people to get vaccinated which they've been doing but uh, anytime you increase the demand you have to increase the supply and we're uh, looking forward to uh, having increased allocation of supply at the earliest possible time so that we can meet these two mandates meeting the general demand that exists and using these vaccines in our vaccine equity programs that are trying to take down barriers and get people vaccinated in the least vaccinated uh, parts of the city, which we've had great success at in phase one or stage one. And now we have to do it again uh, for the second dose. Thank you.
Thank you. Next, we have Molman from 680. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, Mayor Tory, this is about uh, yesterday's announcement from the province about letting pro and elite amateur sports leagues return. Um, what, that doesn't include uh, leagues for kids to play sports, and I know a lot of parents out there are upset and uh, feeling like maybe there's a bit of a double standard because pro sports and elite amateur leagues can return to play. I uh, understand, of course, they have testing and protocols, but uh, kids are left on the sideline until stage three. Uh, so what do you say to those parents who are feeling that there's a bit of a double standard there as their kids uh, eagerly await a chance to play outside? Well, I know it's difficult uh, to have that kind of differentiation as as between when these uh, professional and elite uh, leagues can start to play and when kids can start to play. Uh, the professional and elite league have uh, huge resources at their disposal to put very sophisticated protocols in place to protect uh, public health. And in that sense, uh, it is possible for them to perhaps um, get started a bit earlier on what they're doing because they have the resources and the sophistication to have these protocols in place because they are being put to extensive measures to keep themselves and the public uh, healthy. And I can only say that I think the, the real effort that all of us can make is to continue with what we're doing on vaccination, continue to follow public health rules. And, you know, stage three, I'm very hopeful, is not far away at all. Um, it'll be coincident with uh, or, or just a little bit after uh, we are able to open some summer camps, which, again, because we have a big... Uh, um, you know, a set of resources available to the city, we can put protocols in place to keep kids safe at summer camps. The overriding objective here is to keep the kids safe. So I'm optimistic kids will be playing um, sports uh, on an organized basis this summer. Uh, I'm optimistic we can try to do it as soon as possible. And like many things, if we meet the necessary thresholds on vaccine, vaccines, put the protocols in place uh, and work with these leagues, we can have kids playing before too long. But it's really just to make sure that we have all the uh, measures in place, uh, which the professional sports teams already do uh, to keep kids safe. And that's what I think most people would really want to see us do. It's frustrating. I understand. Uh, just sticking with that announcement yesterday, that includes the Blue Jays uh, coming home, although nothing has been made official there. So this is a two parter uh, in the discussions the city's having with the Jays. Have you heard anything uh, since yesterday about uh, what their plan is in terms of coming home? And they're in a unique position where 100% of their opponents play outside this country. So they'd be coming in and out. Um, what would you like to see uh, in terms of their opponents? Would you prefer? Would you like? Would you, would you ask that all the players and the staff be double vaccinated, fully vaccinated before they come in and out? Is that the kind of thing the city wants to see? I can just say that in past discussions we've had about the possibility of the Blues playing at home. Uh, Obviously, the fact that all the other teams were teams from across the border in the United States was a major factor, just making it more complicated. But the Blue Jays for themselves and for teams that would have come to visit have already put in place or have available an extensive and very uh, uh, lengthy protocol that deals with how to keep everybody safe in terms of vaccinations and uh, tests and, and the like, and, and just uh, protocols to keep people healthy. And so I would think that uh, they're continuing to polish those up, but at the same time, their major uh, consideration at the moment uh, is with the government of Canada and the prevailing uh, quarantine rules. And I know those things have been discussed over past weeks and will, I'm sure, now be discussed, uh, you know, uh, on a more um, uh, intensive basis simply because the province has made arrangements to allow this to happen. And we've always been very careful at trying to make sure all three governments stay on the same page on this uh, with the overriding desire we all have is to see these teams play at home, uh, ultimately to see spectators introduced into that on some kind of a an appropriate basis and so we'll continue to work at that but the action really now shifts a bit to ottawa where they have to decide how we're going to handle the border i think when teams get here the protocols are in place thanks to great work done by major league baseball and the blue jays and by the other leagues too uh, to make sure that everybody's kept safe but it's really the question of the border and the quarantines and all of that and making sure that's consistent with what uh, other people are facing in terms of their requirements and, and Moment, I just want to jump in and say, not only the Blue Jays, I'm looking forward to a Toronto Argos home game. Yes, as am I. And, I, and by the way, I'm very happy that uh, leagues, plural, uh, including the CFL in particular, uh, you know, it ma was made possible for them to have a season yesterday. They don't face the complication of the border, except even uh, they do face it a bit with getting some of their American players to come in here. But they've had arrangements made with the Premier for that, and I am grateful for that because it allows that sport, um, you know, which is one that I'm very familiar with and has its challenges to begin with, uh, to be able to play. Um, and then again, with them, hopefully the spectator question will come along before too long, but at least they can start to play their season, which is very important for them just to be able to put the product on television and have people like Councillor Agency and enjoy the uh, enjoy those games. Thank you.
Thank you everyone for joining us. This concludes our press conference. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Bye bye. Thank you everybody. Stay safe and well. DJ, take care.